Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Number to call, 888 I just want to kind of close the loop on President Obama's trip to Europe. Uh, you know, we talked about the fact that the English press is saying that he bombed in Berlin. It was a weak message. He is a floundering president. We saw that he called the chancellor of the U.K. by the name of an, uh, a rhythm and blues singer, uh, repeatedly made that gaffe more than one time in his speech. He said here in the United States, while he's standing in front of the Brandenburg gate uh, in Berlin, and it's not escaping the notice of the media, both overseas and here political had a story this morning, and I cannot remember the title of the piece, but it was to the effect that the, the mojo is gone. The thrill is gone from Barack Obama. The magic has worn off. And now Democrats are turning all of their attention to Hillary Clinton. In other words, what you're about to see, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, is Barack Obama is going to be kicked to the back of the Democratic bus. This guy has now become a liability for the Republican Party. I mean, the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party is going to tell him to sit in the back of the bus The front of the Democratic bus belongs to the white person, Hillary Clinton. So I think that's what the Democrats are going to do. They're going to start shoving Barack Obama toward the rear because this guy has now become a positive liability. Uh, I have another article in the stack here about how America's standing in the world is plummeting virtually by the day, how much lower the estimate of the United States is in the eyes of the world than it was under that cowboy George W. Bush. Now, here's Eugene Robinson, clip four. Rob, Eugene Robinson, he's columnist for the Washington Post. This guy's as hardcore left as you can get. And um, the luster has worn off the Christmas tree ornament for Eugene Robinson as well uh, as he expresses his disappointment in Barack Obama. Here we have a president who's really talking back to the United States by talking to the kids of Europe, the youth, Mm -hmm. the well-educated college kids of Humboldt University down the street there, Mm -hmm. about Gitmo. Why do they care about Gitmo? Well, they do. They care 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 a lot about Gitmo, actually. They care about that as a symbol. Okay, why is he talking to them to get to our students, really, our kids, our young people? Well, um, there is an echo here. Remember the speech before the election um, when when he spoke to 250,000 people in, in in Berlin and and one of the things one of the hopes that they and a lot of people around the world invested in President Obama was he would end a lot of the Bush era policies uh, that were condemned around the world. Literally, I mean, it's very important yeah. stuff to people yeah. and the, the torture and Guantanamo. Even the wars is a huge symbol of all of that. And there is disappointment that he hasn't. That he is hasn't that because Howard they, they they sort of in a cartoon way thought African American Democrat he's a man of the simple left like a lot of their students are. That's right. Like a, So that's uh, Eugene Robinson. I mean, there is Chris Matthews at the end. What a racist insult. What a racist insult. Talking about, in a cartoon way, they thought African-American Democrat, he's a man of the simple left. Simple is a code word for simpleton, for somebody who is too dumb to be able to think and do sophisticated things. So Chris Matthews, I mean, what a horrible racist stereotype to apply to the president. And that's yet what Chris Matthews does. But you hear Eugene Robinson, the takeaway here is here's a hardcore leftist using the word disappointment to describe Barack Obama. We thought he was going to bring to an end these Bush era policies and he has not done it. In fact, drop down to clip, um, 11, if we can, Rob. This is FBI Director Robert Miller, and we talked about this yesterday. He mentioned the fact that uh, the use of drones. Now, we've talked repeatedly about the use of drones overseas, and it's been controversial because we have taken out American citizens who are overseas engaging in jihad. And I've already expressed my view on that. Once they take up arms against the United States, their citizenship means nothing. You got an American citizen. He jumps into a Panzer tank in World War II, turns the tank on American soldiers. You can forget about his constitutional rights to anything. You drop a grenade on that um, that tank. So I have no problem with the use of drones to take out Americans overseas 
who have taken up arms against the United States and against the interests of the United States. But the left is aghast at this, and there are conservatives that are complaining about that. But, you know, most of us have zero use or zero problem with the use of drones uh, on the field of battle. But there's been real questions about the use of drones on American soil. And remember, Rand Paul tried repeatedly to get, I don't remember if it was Eric Holder or somebody, to to get the this administration to declare that they would not use a drone to take out an American citizen on American soil. And he wouldn't do it. So then you've got the concern about the use of drones for surveillance on American soil. And until yesterday, we didn't know that that was happening. But here is the director of the FBI, Robert Miller. Remember, this is the guy, I think it was Trey Gowdy was asking, well, who's in charge of your investigation into the IRS? Well, I don't know. Well, is there an investigation going on? This is the leading scandal in America right now. Is there an investigation going on? Well, I don't know. I don't have any idea about that. I can check on that and get back to you. He's been going for six weeks. He has no idea. Head of the FBI, if there's even an investigation into this IRS harassment, into this IRS persecution of conservative groups, doesn't even know. So he's completely clueless, completely incompetent. But he admitted yesterday something about drones. Let's listen. So to the extent that it relates to the airspace, uh, there would be uh, some communication back and forth. So instead of asking a question, I think I can assume, since uh, you do use drones, that the FBI has developed a set of policies, procedures, and operational limits on the use of drones and, um, and whether or not any privacy impact on American citizens. Well, we are in the initial stages of doing that, and I, I will tell you that uh, our footprint, footprint is very small. We have very few and have limited use, and we're exploring uh, not only uh, the use, but also uh, the necessary uh, guidelines for that use. Does the FBI use drones for surveillance on U.S. soil? Yes. So uh, Miller says, yeah. We use drones for surveillance on military soil. Have you developed policies that set the limits for how these drones can be used to protect the privacy rights of citizens? And Miller said, no. We don't have anything like that. We have no restrictions. We have no guidelines. We have no parameters around how these drones can be used in domestic, uh, in domestic surveillance. So in other words, he said, we're, at this point, we may well be violating all sorts of constitutional rights because we have no policies in place that would keep us from doing that very thing. Now, I want to shift gears just a little bit. Well, let, me, let me finish up with uh, President Obama. One last thing. You know, we've said about this president that he, he's tone deaf when it comes to other nations. He thinks he's gonna, he was going to come into office and he was going to change the way the world thinks about America. Well, he has. They think less of us now than they did then. And he went to Ireland where you've got a strong system of parochial schools, Catholic schools. And here, President Obama just condemns Christian education altogether. Here's a piece from CNS News. Likening religious schools to segregation, a racist system that forced blacks to attend different schools and use different facilities than whites in the American South, President Barack Obama told a town hall meeting for youth in Belfast, Northern Ireland, that there should not be Catholic and Protestant schools because such schools cause division. Quote, because issues like segregated schools and housing, lack of jobs and opportunities, symbols of history that are a source of pride for some and pain for others, these are not tangential to peace. They're essential to it. If towns remain divided, if Catholics have their schools and buildings and Protestants have theirs, if we can't see ourselves in one another, if fear or resentment are allowed to harden, that encourages division it discourages cooperation. So there is Barack Obama. What's he saying? He's saying Christian education is divisive. Christian education is corrosive to culture. Christian education is corrosive to a society. We cannot have Christian education. We cannot have Christian schools. I mean, the implication is they need to be shut down, they need to be padlocked, and their schools need to be taken to re-education camps 
run by elitist Democrats such as himself. Now I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about the uh, immigration uh, debate. We're just going to get started on this, and we'll play some sound bites coming out on the other side. Um, Jeff, let's have that phone call ready to go, that audio sound bite. Uh, yesterday, you had two rallies going on on the Capitol grounds. You had a Tea Party rally on one side of the Capitol building. You had an audit the IRS rally going on the other side of the Capitol building. And the audit the IRS event, well, well the, no, the, the immigration event was actually sponsored uh, no, wait a minute. I mean, the audit the IRS event, the audit the IRS event was actually sponsored and hosted by lawmakers, by members of Congress. It was their event. Now, if you have an event that's hosted and sponsored by members of Congress, everybody ought to be able to go. But the Capitol Police heard that there were people that were over at the immigration rally, and they were going over to the audit the IRS rally. This is the Capitol grounds. This is public. Uh, this is th this is a public building. It's a public site. I've been on the Capitol grounds many, many times. It's huge. There's all kind of space for people to walk around. They can go anywhere they want on the grounds. And the Capitol Police tried to keep Tea Party types from going to the IRS rally, and they tried to keep people attending the IRS rally from going to the immigration rally. And one of the organizers got this call. We just have audio on this, obviously. Got this call from somebody from the Capitol Hill Police. Let's listen. Mr. Mooneyham, this is Officer Sandra Brown, Capitol Police Special Events. It's 9.28 a.m. June 19th. Uh, there are members of your group that are moving into other areas on the Capitol grounds, uh, joining other groups on the east front of the Capitol. That activity is not authorized. Your area is the west front of the Capitol have uh, either yourself and your 12 marshals keep your group in your area, in your area only. only. You cannot join other groups and other areas that have been permitted to other groups. If you have any questions, call the office. Police personnel will be on site uh, to take whatever action necessary to keep order and peace on our grounds. I will try to, again, reach you by phone. Well, so much for the right to peaceably assemble and petition the government for the redress of grievances. It was actually the immigration event hosted by sitting members of Congress. Focal Point, AFR Talk.